Welcome to Linux in the Shell episode 30 VM stat. My name is Dan Washko. I'll be your host. As always, this is just an example video of using VM stat. For the full write up and explanation of the information, head on over to the website linuxintheshell.org and look up episode 30 VM stat. Uh, I'd also like to thank Hagger Public Radio for hosting the website and the audio files. So if you have not done so already, check it out linuxintheshell.org. Episode 30 for the audio file and the full write-up and bibliography. All right, VMstat, uh, what I talked about in the write-up, VMstat gathers its information out of the proc directory, utilizing a few files. Uh, one is meminfo. So all this information in meminfo right here that you can find. This is just an output of the proc directory on my current running system. It's a virtual file system. So there's meminfo stat. That's what you see in the stat directory or file. And then you can also go under each individual process ID. So um, right there, each individual process ID has a stat of its own. So let's just pick one, 19779, oh, 77, there we go, 777. And you see stat in there. Uh, so it's not very friendly information. VM stat allows you to get more uh, friendly information. So I put that out. You see that it gives you a nice little table format of the different values in here. Uh, that's what you have by default. Let me clear that and, and do that again. VM stat. So you have your processy information running and um, Uh, running that and uh, that are in it runnable and interruptible sleep. You got memory information, uh, swap free buffer cache, and so on that I talked about in the write up. Uh, if you want to uh, see different view of memory information, you can do the dash A or active, which shows you uh, active information. Now you notice that it replaced buffer and cache with inactive and active information right there. Uh, so there you go. That's a nice little handy bit of information that you have there. Uh, VM stat. will allow you to pass a value of one or any value and then two integers. Uh, I'm going to do one for the first one's delay. The second one is count. So if I do that one, that means I'm going to have three iterations of VM stat one second apart. And it shows you the uh, information here as you're running it and updates it in real time there of the past second from here's uh, from current system to boot from boot to current is right here and then from the last second iteration and the second before that so it's one second in between now if I, if I leave off the one you'll see that it keeps incrementing every second or so right there until it scrolls off the bottom now we're watching this here I want to show you make a point um, I wish I could move it faster I don't want to adjust the screen size because well It'll mess up, and I have to get it back out to the actual screen size. But what I want to show is when it scrolls off the bottom of the screen, which will happen in a few seconds, you'll see it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It's going to reprint that header information as it scrolls off there. You can, um, I'm going to hit Control-C to stop this. If I wanted to do that, I can do dash N, which will suppress that header information as it goes off the top of the screen so we're going to give it about 15 seconds this is exciting I know people look at that look at my virtual memory information going on there uh, see how my system's handling I got nothing else really running uh, the system is pretty much running idle a lot of the time uh, I'm not looking at any serious swapping which is good uh, so my system is running pretty healthy for what I'm throwing at it not a lot of resource intensive stuff going on and you'll notice here as we get to the top it's not going to print that header information again see I'm not a liar it's not there it just keeps going so that's that's uh, called the one header right there very handy now VM stat can s print this information in a tabular format a stat in a non in a table format that's a little more human readable right there so that again the VM stat dash s shows the uh, information in a more human readable format but it and same essential information the only caveat is you can't provide 
like an, an incremental count. It won't accept it. It only it, it will not do anything, but it, it will not accept the iterations and it won't do a delay. So th there you go. Now you can change the um, if you notice when I ran VM stat here, it's all in kilobytes. And if you do a a dash s, it shows you right here in kilobytes. Uh, you can change that with the dash s or unit, and I'm going to change it to, uh, let's go with megabytes right there. So if I did that and did s, you see now it changes to megabytes instead. So that's pretty handy. Now the other one that I, t I could do is m, lowercase m, and it shows you m, and that's 1,000 or 1 million bytes, not 1 million uh, or 1 million times 1024. So just be aware of that. VM stat will show disk information with the dash D. There's disk information. You can do same iterations on those, suppressing the header and everything. It shows you the information for block devices. Now I can show specific information, VM stat, for a partition. And I don't know if I can do two. No, I can only pass one at a time. So I can look at that information per partition. I can also do a summary mode, which is dash D right there, and gives me that information in a summary mode. That's pretty handy there. We're looking at disk input output. Uh, I can look at forks, as I talked about, with the dash F right there. It shows you forking information. That's all exciting. Whether you, but if you don't have any virtual forks or clones, there's nothing to report there. And then slab information. If I do VM stat dash M for slab information, uh, your kernel does not support slab info for your or your permissions are insufficient. So I would actually have to run sudo there and put in my password to get the slab information in a tabular format. So there you are. That's VM stat in a nutshell of the different things, uh, different switches that you can do and how to run it, where to look for information. Uh, head on over to the website to understand what all this output means a little clearer. Thanks a lot and have a great day.